why americans are so confused over which states are southern what is the south i'm very interested to see this because when i see maps of people talking about america talk about the south of america and i'm pretty sure they don't like include florida in the south and stuff even though on the map it's like the most southern point very interested to see what we got with this video see what's actually considered as the south before we do get into this i appreciate if you guys could that subscribe button and yeah let's just straight into this and see what we got what is the south is Texas a part of the South? Okay. What about Florida? Right. Is the nation's capital city a part of the Southern US? If you ask five different people, then you'll probably get five different answers. Right. While the other major regions of the country are generally agreed upon, the South is seemingly in question to where its boundaries are. The US Census okay. Bureau has defined an exact area. However, among many American citizens, there is often a debate. Some reasons <laughs> for this include culture, politics, development patterns, right. and the American Civil War, among others. On this video, we'll take a look at some of those factors and how they shape people's perception of what is and isn't the South. I'll yeah, also, I'm interested to why a lot of people don't include Florida in the South. I'll give you the official definition from the government, as well as my personal perspective as a Southern man who has traveled all throughout the country. Okay. Hit the like button, subscribe if you love the content, and let's talk doing? about the South. So first, let's take a look at how the federal government defines the South. Taking a look at the map here, all the states that you would expect are included, but also right. certain states that Americans occasionally debate. Texas, Oklahoma, and Florida are included in the South. Well, wait, wait, people debate saying Texas isn't included in the South? As are Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Delaware. So by this definition, the northern boundary of the South is Maryland, Delaware, West Virginia, Kentucky, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Right. Also by this definition, the South is America's most populous region with over 127 million people, or 38% of the entire population of the U.S. Well, wait, wait, he said it's the most populous region, the least? As of the 2020 census, it is also America's fastest growing region as many Americans have fled the Northeast and the Midwest in recent decades in favor of the South. The five largest okay. metro areas in the region in order are Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, and Miami. All Yo, people try to get that good weather, bro. But then again, you get good weather. You get good weather all year as well. Five of which are also among the top 10 largest metro areas in the country. So now, why the debate among Americans on what is or isn't the South? The first reason we'll look at is history. Right. Typically, when someone talks about what is historically the South, the conversation goes back to the days of the American Civil War. During this time, the nation was divided over the institution of slavery, with northern states abolishing the practice, while okay. most southern states wanted to keep it in place. Predating the Civil War in 1820 was the Missouri Compromise, which established the Mason-Dixon line as the dividing line between free states and slave states. This line between Maryland and Pennsylvania was seen as a dividing line between the North and the South, with the South being referred to as Dixie. The current U.S. Oh, wow. Census Bureau's definition of the South still uses this boundary between it and the Northeastern states today. Okay, so when you hear an American include Maryland, Washington, D.C., and Delaware in the South, they are usually either referring to the Mason-Dixie line or the official U.S. Census Bureau definition of the South. The other aspect of debate from the Civil War era is which states were slave states and which... Wait, yeah, so like, technically, they're saying the South goes all the way up here as well? Interesting. The other aspect of debate from the Civil War era is which states were slave states and which ones were free states. Leading up to the Civil War, America was still admitting new territories to the Union as right. states, and the final map included Missouri as a slave state while recently admitted Kansas and Minnesota became new free states. Okay. Outside of the Civil War era, you'll rarely find anyone who considers Missouri a part of the South today, as it is almost universally agreed upon to be a Midwestern state. This okay, map right. leading up to the Civil War is also where many will include Texas, Oklahoma, and Florida in the definition of the South. Besides, when it comes to Florida, geographically speaking, it can't be anything but the South. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but I'm, bro, I've seen so many maps where, like, when it's talking about southern states, they don't include Florida, but it's the most southern, you know what I'm saying? After the Civil War, the southern states were known to have leaned the most heavily into Jim Crow laws to segregate and disenfranchise their black citizens. These states were also the most resistant to integration after the Civil Rights Movement, with the federal government having to intervene in many cases. Perhaps the most cause for debate among what is or isn't the South today is culture. This can range from anything right, okay. from food to sure. music 
customs and courtesies, the accents and dialects. I'm guessing that's why a lot of people don't include Florida is when it comes down to the culture, right? That That's going to be my guess. And many other things. Wait, 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 wait. Being a Southern, you don't have to be born in the South, but once you start saying y'all and yes, ma'am, you've been covered. Living in a slower place is a requirement. Chicken and fish is typically fry. <laughs> Biscuits, macaroni, cheese, and sweet tea are staples. Being hospitable and kind to others is where life. That's cool. Enjoying the outdoors involving a porch, a rocking chair, and a good friend. That's cool. And you believe that palmetto cheese should always be shared unless you're almost out. <laughs> Oftentimes with food, when people think of the South, many will think about things like fried chicken, Ooh. collard greens, mashed potatoes and such, okay. as well as that good old Southern barbecue. Ooh. This is also sometimes referred to as soul food, and you can find it marketed at some restaurants as Southern food, even in areas outside the South. Give it me some of that. It tastes so good, but it certainly isn't good for you. No doubt that this food also contributes to the higher obesity rates and health-related issues for many Southern Americans. Right. The South has also been known for having a lower cost of living, lower income, and a generally slower pace of life than other parts of the country. Okay. It is considered to be less socially progressive than Northern states. In 2023, you'll still find a certain green plant to be illegal in almost every Southern state, as well as more restrictions on where and when alcohol can be sold. Oh, wait. Yo. Wait, it's illegal in in the South. Oh, I thought the majority of the Amer uh, uh, majority of America it was illegal. Most every Southern state, as well as more restrictions on where and when alcohol can be sold. Racially speaking, the South is also known for having the largest concentration of Black Americans. Okay. Despite the great migration of the early 20th century to Northern areas for jobs. The vast majority of America's black population still lies in the southern U.S. states. Right. With places such as Atlanta and Washington, D.C. being considered meccas for professional black Americans. The southern United States is for the most part the only place where you'll find metro areas in which the black population is a very large percentage of the total population. In fact, the top 25 metros in terms of percentage black population all lie within the southern United States. Oh, wow. Appalachian culture is also associated with the south. Large amounts of immigrants known. Wait, the what culture? 25 metros in terms of percentage black population all lie within the southern United States. Appalachian culture is also associated with the South. Okay. Large amounts of immigrants known as Scots-Irish, along with many Germans settled in the mountain regions of states such as Kentucky, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia. These areas are more racially white than other parts of the South, with the population being as high as 80% white in some parts. Many people also associate Appalachian culture with mining, as this area historically produced over two-thirds of America's coal output. Oh, Country and bluegrass music are known for being prominent in Appalachia. The other cultural right. thing you'll notice about the South is how dominant religion is in the area. When you come down here to the South, it is not uncommon to see churches seemingly on every other corner. In Bro, three churches on the same road? Oh, wow. I don't think I've ever seen that. In many cities. It has by far the highest church attendance rate of any region in the U.S. And this has led to the South also being known as the Bible Belt. These cultural reasons also are part of why certain states are now being debated as being Southern. As places such as Maryland... Wait, yeah, I, I already see. I, look, 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 Florida is like... They're, they're like slipping from this part. From this, uh, this stop right here. Also are part of why certain states are now being debated as being Southern. As places such as Maryland and the Washington, D.C. metro have become more urbanized in recent years, some Americans no longer consider them to be culturally Southern. Culturally, okay. these places have begun to align more with the Northeastern U.S. rather than what is traditionally considered the South. So you're telling me the the South has basically kicked out Florida and the bottom part of te uh, Texas? And that's because... I'm very surprised with Texas, actually. But is that just because it, it's more of like... A, being Southern isn't being the South, the most South point is more of like being Southern as a, a culture. Culture is also a reason why some exclude Florida. Those in the Florida right. Panhandle and Northern Florida in general tend to be very culturally aligned with the rest of the South. Ironically, okay. as you go further South in the state, the less Southern some people consider Florida to be. Right. Central and Southern Florida have attracted a very diverse population that is very different from the rest of the South. You'll find a very heavy Latin American influence in the Miami Metro, along with a massive amount of transplants from the Northeastern US. This is present along with a mix of the traditional white and black racial makeup that typically comprises the other Southern states. In some parts of Miami, one might feel like they're in South America, 
rather than the southern United States of America. Culture also right. sometimes blurs the line with Texas and Oklahoma, along with their geography being more in a central section of the country. Uh. While eastern Texas is undoubtedly aligned with traditionally southern cultural states such as Louisiana and Arkansas, when one gets to the western side of the state, the culture is anything but traditionally southern. It is instead linked. Yo, that's uh, interesting to me because I've always thought Texas has been like just extremely southern, but it's the eastern part that's southern. Okay. More with the southwestern U.S. The racial dynamics of the South are the other cultural reason that Florida and Texas are sometimes excluded. The South has traditionally known to be, for the most part, a black and white region. But as right. Hispanic immigrants have poured into Texas and Florida in modern times, the makeup of those states is now very different from the other southern states. San Antonio in particular is now the only major metro in America where the majority of the population is Hispanic. Hispanic immigrants are growing in population in other southern states as well. But the rest of the South is still- Wait, is that because a lot of people are going from Mexico to Texas? Is that why that is? Hispanic immigrants are growing in population in other southern states as well. But the rest of the South is still dominated by the white and black population mixture. Okay. The next reason is one of the more contentious ones, and that is politics. Now, I don't dabble too much into politics on this channel, but they certainly play a role in geography and undoubtedly play a huge role. In Wait, what's this? Why politicians don't build transit because you don't vote? Um, 90% voting age citizens in Houston live in vote? Okay. What's this? In Houston, 42% of, of registered voters over the age of 65 voted. It's compared to 6.6 .6 of registered voters age to 80. So the old... Oh, wow. Is that low? 6% of people ages 18 to 34 only voted? 6%? Oh, wow. Structure. The South and the North have historically been divided politically in the U.S all the way back to the 19th century and the American Civil War. In modern times, many Americans tend to associate blue or liberal leaning states with the North and red or conservative leaning states with the South. Okay. This used to typically fit right in line with what the federal government considers the South. However, as many transplants from the North have relocated to Southern states and the South has become more urbanized, the political lines have blurred. States right. such as Maryland and Delaware have become reliably blue. Well, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. From these maps right here, you can't really tell. Like, th th there's not like a separate. There's not like a, a split between the southern states and the rest of America. It is just like blended. States further south, such as North Carolina and Virginia, have become purple or swing states. With the shock of Georgia, right in the heart of the South, becoming a blue state in the most recent presidential election. Politically, what you will find in most of these southern states that are booming in population. Wait, hold on. You know how obviously Biden beat Trump, but on this map it looks like Trump wins. Like, am I am I tripping? I'm seeing more red than blue. Am I tripping? I swear I'm seeing more red than blue. Wait, interesting. How does that work then? I thought when it comes to becoming the president. You have to, um, each state is like a point and whoever gets the majority, do you know what I mean? From each state. Is that not how it works? Presidential election. Politically, what you will find in most of these southern states that are booming in population is that politics on the state level remain mostly conservative while the urban areas in these states have become more liberal. Examples right. include Raleigh-Durham and Charlotte in North Carolina, Atlanta in Georgia, Dallas, Houston, and Austin in Texas and the Orlando and Tampa areas in Florida. These political changes have led some Americans to say that Virginia is no longer Southern and that even a state as far South as North Carolina might be becoming less Southern, politically speaking. Now, the final reason for the debate over what is Southern is the infrastructure and the style of development. The North and the Midwest were traditionally it's the most complex. industrialized parts of the country, home to most of its large cities, manufacturing, and such. These cities developed earlier in US history, and as such, you'll find a lot more dense urban cores and more dense residential areas. Right. The so-called missing middle housing can be found all over the northern states. Transit systems in the northern U.S. are more robust and extensive, and culturally the citizens are more inclined to use them. Lots are smaller, infrastructure is older and more worn down. Walkability is more common in northern cities, whereas in the south, most walkable areas are typically limited to the urban core of a given city. Due to this area having a much higher percentage of the nation's population in the 1950s, you'll find a higher density when it comes to interstate highways, 
while the highways themselves tend to be more narrow and often include tolls. Oh, yeah. Look at this, bro. It then starts to thin and just spread out more the more south that you go. In the south, things are far more spread out, as yeah, most now prominent like southern cities were small, sleepy towns prior to the interstate highway system, opening okay. them up to business. America's most sprawling metros can be found in the south, as land is cheap and abundant, and major southern metros have little to no geographic constraint to their expansion. Highways are wider and larger, interchanges are bigger, especially in Texas. Public transit networks are more limited as these cities, which only recently have become major cities, struggle to build networks that can attract a decent amount of riders. Okay. Single family housing in Southern- So as of right now, it's just not worth it to do that? States is extremely dominant and widespread mm. amount of riders. Single family housing in Southern states is extremely dominant and widespread. And okay. you'll rarely find mid to high density development outside of their core downtown areas. Wait, 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 I'm confused. What, what is single family housing? What, what what's the difference between these and yours single family housing in southern states is extremely dominant and okay. widespread and you'll rarely find mid to high density development outside of their core downtown areas you can have a lot of space down here for a lower price when it comes to infrastructure That's and development good. the line typically starts at the washington dc metro area as this is where you'll start to see things transition from the spread of most southern metros to the more dense style of development found in the northeast Row houses, missing middle housing, and other types of mid-density development start to appear in the D.C., Delaware, and Maryland areas. Single-family housing and sprawling suburbs are certainly still present, but no- Yeah, I don't know what single-family housing means. Single-family housing? What does that mean? Nowhere near as extensive as in metros such as the Raleigh-Durham area or Atlanta. And it will cost you a pretty penny to get that large single family home once you get to DC and points to the north. Okay. Toll roads begin to appear more and Washington DC's metro system easily trumps any transit network to the south of it. This is the most dense part of the country and the only part where one can easily travel between cities without driving. Washington oh, DC wow. also forms the southern end of the Boswash Northeast Megalopolis, further cementing its connection to the northeast rather than the south. So when it comes to infrastructure and development style, Texas, Florida, and Oklahoma are most definitely the South, while DC, Maryland, and Virginia tend to be more Northern. And finally, what do I consider the South? Well, I grew up in North Carolina, which is- You know what? Yeah, everyone watching this comment down, especially if you are Southern, what states do you consider the South? That'd be very interesting because honestly, like, yeah, this does make sense. Uh, it does go a little bit high here. If I'm looking at it from like, like, just like south, like northeast, southwest, right? This doesn't make sense, including Texas and Florida, right? Of course. E e even the south here, bro, you know what I mean? Like, that's the south of the country, right? Very interesting. Very interesting. It, it, it's just, honestly, just more culture, right? And finally, what do I consider the south? Well, I grew up in North Carolina, which is unquestionably the south and has some relatives in the DMV area that we traveled to visit oftentimes growing up. Since then, I've traveled all over the country pretty extensively, and you can probably already guess that as a civil engineer, the factor that weighs the most to me is the infrastructure and the style of development, okay. and to a lesser degree, the culture. Once you get to Richmond, you already start to feel the difference, and it definitely has that older, more northern style of development in its core. But I think that when it comes to Virginia, the state as a whole is too southern in development and infrastructure to not consider the south. Plus, right. the culture outside of northern Virginia is definitely still stereotypically southern. So to me, the south ends once you cross into D.C., so as to keep it at a state line division. The D.C. Metro Transit, the sheer density. Yo, if this is the line of the South, bro, imagine being on the line here. You're like, bro, you, you're probably thinking, am I Southern? Oh, am I, oh I'm a Northern dude. What am I? Keep it at a state line division. The D.C. Metro Transit, the sheer density and walkability of D.C. itself is unlike any of the other actual Southern metros. I rarely, if ever, hear a Southern accent around D.C. Going further okay. into Maryland further cements that idea. Baltimore looks much more like Philly and a larger version of Wilmington, Delaware than it does Houston, Charlotte, or Atlanta. And of course, if you're familiar with that Baltimore accent, then you know that they don't sound like any 
other Southerners. Also, Interstate 95 starts to have tolls once you get to Maryland, whereas it is a free highway in the rest of the South. Even though the famous Southern restaurant Bojangles does have a few locations in the Maryland part of the DMV. For me, the politics are the lowest on the totem pole as to what is considered the South, because politics are just too dynamic. Georgia yeah. voted for a Democrat president in 2020. North Carolina did in 2008. Even Arkansas voted. Yeah, I can't lie. Politics-wise, it's just a mix. For his native son in the 1990s, whereas Florida went from purple to red in recent years. Almost all of the major southern metros are blue in the core cities and red in the rural areas and surrounding suburbs, while some states have governors of the opposite party to what they voted for in the presidential elections. So things just get way too convoluted when you go off of politics. Right. But those are my thoughts, guys. I would love to hear what you guys think on this topic. Both Very polls I did interesting. On consider the South spark the huge amount of debate. Wait, I watched the DC Maryland part of the South. Yes, they bet. Wait, which one won? No, they're not part of the South, 79%. So I know that there are some strong opinions wow. on this subject. Make sure to let me know where you're from and why you think what you think. And as always... Yeah, very interesting though. Yeah, if you're from the South, you gotta let me know which states do you think is Southern, which states you don't think is Southern. But yeah, very interesting video. Always want to look at a video like this because whenever I see maps, it always confuses me when they're talking about the South and like Florida is just not included. It always confuses me. Very, very, very interesting video. Enjoy this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3W. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.